Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, August 9th, 2021. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Well, welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast. It's been determined the length. Episode number, actually, today's the 8th. Yeah. Uh, the 11th, because... Uh, uh, yeah, I was looking at a date in the wrong place. Anyways, <laughs> see, I told you I was going to screw this up. <laughs> Episode number six eleven. If I didn't say that already, I don't know. We're, we're just can, can we? Uh, just, okay. Uh, we're, we're, there we go. Let's just go into this. Just eat it, eat it. Let's talk about food. <laughs> Oh, I love it. <laughs> I love Gary's expression. <laughs> I can love it. Do you okay over there, David? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. It, needless <laughs> to say, pre-show, we did talk about food. But we will get into that. We will not get into that. Gary, what specifically about the, the food like are we talking about? Time. For no. the... <laughs> so so what it, what what's the topic, Gary? What's going on, Gary? Sorry, my brain my brain is stuck in a different mode at the moment. Let me give me a second, because Jeff played that clip, and then for some reason, I totally went down like a dirty hole. Like, <laughs> like right into a dirty hole. <laughs> well, you know, eat ass. Anyway, uh-huh. so that's not what today's topic is. Today's topic is <laughs> summer sensations, because you know it's Augie. Uh, we're in a new month. And we haven't done a let's talk about food in a little while. So what yeah. do we basically kind of like what are our thoughts about what we think of in summer food? Like when the temperature goes up and the sun's out, like are there certain foods that you crave or expect or um, I mean, they could be seasonal. Most likely they are. Yeah. Um, for me. OK, so this is. um this is usually the main time this is going to sound really silly but this is the main time of the year when i really crave ice cream okay because it's warm it's hot you want something cool and refreshing um so for me like this is usually when i want like ice cream and i'm gonna like caveat it with yes you can have ice cream all fucking year long like no problem let's like like eat eat what you want but for me specifically it cool it's a cooling of like the obviously because it's you know frozen you know whatever uh that i don't i like it better when i'm warm or hot to help me cool down um um and when i like when you were a kid that used to also include um popsicles like that's the, like the thing that pops in my head when i think about summer is i think about being a kid running around with like the twin pops um like not no you didn't share it no but you just like you know you, you ate the whole thing at two, once you had to two mm-hmm, steps. you mm-hmm. could have break it apart and, and like eating one after the other even mm-hmm, so you wouldn't have mm-hmm. to share it but you could at least no. make it a little bit smaller and easier to to uh put it into your yep. mouth yeah it's like that's my thing like i those are like those are my usual when i think about summer and food i think about things that are cold to cool you down to keep you refreshed um yeah be it 
um, ice cream, popsicles, um, frozen lemonade, um, mm. um, those kind of things. Because th- that's what I think of mostly. Do I do it? Do I eat all the time? No, not really. But I usually during the summer, those are the things that like I immediately go to as like this is refreshing and cooling and great when you're hot. I, like a lot of the times I think of lemonade, especially pink lemonade was the thing. I think for me when I was a kid, would be used to just have pink lemonade all the time, which is a slightly different flavor than than regular lemonade, but it's not quite like strawberry lemonade or watermelon le- lemonade or some of those mixed mixed lemonades. Oh. Yes. Mm-hmm. I was at the Dollar Tree, the dollar store yesterday and wanted to like just like in one of the random aisles was a blueberry lemonade and like a two liter like jug. And I was like, Oh, I'm so tempted to get this, but I'd have to, I would have to literally like have it in the refrigerator, like not pour it over ice. Like right now, like have it right now. I'd have to let it cool in its jug, Take you it, know, on its own. Refrigerator. Yeah. Put it in the refrigerator and then like get a thing of ice and pour on top of it so that it's just like that extra cool like yeah uh, uh. <sighs> Gary um I agree with you on the ice cream part like although I mean I eat ice cream all year round uh, mm-hmm. but my but my flavors change yeah. So like uh, Jenny's based out of Columbus, Ohio. I just got a shipment mm. in uh, this week <laughs> because they have a whole ice cream yes. truck series that they came out with. Um, oh, that's and right. So I will say that uh, those most of those flavors that I've had already are incredibly yummy. Um, in fact, I'm getting a little irritated with her because she keeps rolling out a new damn flavor every week, it seems like. And I was like, I'm not a- near a place to pick it up, so I have to, like, ship. And th- a lot of them are limited time flavor. Yeah. Things. So it's kind of annoying. Oh, my God. No. Get out of here. She needs to go. What? I just went to the site, and there's this this one called Golden Nectar. Uh-huh. No. That's the no. newest one. No. Crack, crack, <laughs> no. Get out! Can you, can you describe what golden nectar is supposed to be? Because the first thing that pops says... into my mind is piss play, but that's another matter. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm it sure is... it's not, but yeah, that, that's um, not it. So I'm trying to get the actual like flavors. Um, the thing that it has is like it, it it says the the tagline is tastes like fading summer sunlight. Thank you. Top with cracked caramel. And it is like a chilled summer chai with notes of nectar, vanilla, and clove, flirty with firecracker-like snaps of um, aerated toffee candy. So it's spicy. So it's a very like, yeah, it's a very, it, it's not something I would immediately think of, but when I saw the flavor, like the the name of it, and then went into like the design. Oh, that sounds really good. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. So, yeah. Go ahead, Gary. I just will say, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's the one that, that I have in my freezer that I just got in that I haven't tried yet um, of those particular flavors. But I'm a huge, like, Jenny's fan, but that's not a surprise. I've probably mentioned that before here. Um, yeah, like, so, I mean, when I think of summer, I kind of think of, like, picnic Mm-hmm. Um, outdoors kind of things, um, produce that's in season at mm-hmm. the time of year. Like I joined a, um, a, uh, whatchamacallit, a, um, CSA, a community supported agriculture program. So as a, a county, um, employee, we have an option to partake in a CSA. I mean, technically everybody can do a CSA, but for us, there's a special program with a local mm-hmm. farm and so we get stuff every once a week um and there's different things that you can do so i've been getting a bunch of stuff like i have tomatoes right now i have jalapeno peppers that came in this week mm-hmm. um i've had cabbage i got corn for the first time this week um 
gotten some onions, spinach, lettuces, kale, some different stuff. So like, and I'm intentionally trying to get like more veggies into my regular right. So that's why I decided mm-hmm. to join this program. Um, but yeah, so uh, like, like especially corn on the cob. Oh that's yeah. That's a definitive like summertime thing. Um, I mean, technically you can have corn year round. And that's like an, another uh, intriguing thing is we live in a technology now where like time frame, mm-hmm. you can pretty much have anything anytime. And it is a little messy because like some foods are available year round, but they don't, they're not meant to be made year round. Mm-hmm. So like, you know, tomatoes as an example, tomatoes are like in right now. Tomatoes are great. So it's like squash zucchini those things are great however like the fact that you can buy them in january is where it's not so good because they're being grown out of season and that's one of the things i talk about seasonality with food is like that you know tomatoes in the winter don't taste as good as like fresh summer tomatoes mm-hmm. you know and there's there's a whole bunch of different um things behind that so well, i think technology nowadays you know helping to improve that sort of thing being able to grow year round with like uh internal vertical farms mm-hmm. where basically they're yeah. grown vertically versus and usually indoors right. in, a, in a in a environment that made to replicate the ideal yeah. situation yeah and and that's great um as a person who doesn't particularly like tomatoes I will. I, okay, let me rephrase. Um, God, this is complicated. Damon's complicated relationship with tomatoes. Um, <laughs> I am not the biggest fan of raw tomato. If it's like cooked in like something um, steamed, you know, grilled, what have you, made I'm usually sauce. okay with it. Yeah, made it to sauces. Yeah, I'm fine. But like raw tomato um, is a texture thing for me because there's like. And when you think of a tomato, there's generally two to three different textures in that, like, one thing sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, I don't know. Um, um, but I can take it in small doses. And especially, like, you're talking about in the summer, I like it in the summer. Because um, Jim actually, um, a couple of weeks ago, he made a, a panzanella salad. Mm-hmm. So he took like a we he got this thing of um, bread, got it stale, cut it up, um, added basil and um, tomato and um, like little mozzarella balls and 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 probably olive oil and all that stuff and just mix it all together and so fucking good. Um, and I was okay with the tomato in that for some I don't I don't know why probably because it was I cooked think, a bit, a little bit. Um, it wasn't like a fresh it, tomato or anything like that, right? Yeah. But it was, I don't know if he cooked it in any, well, it, you know, anyway, it was just enough of a difference that it was good and fine for me. Um, it also helps that there was other things there to kind of mask the texture issue that I have with the tomato. There were mu- multiple textures in this whole thing, you know, so I was okay with it. So it's not um, necessarily a flavor thing. It's more of a texture thing. It can become a flavor thing, but I think a lot of that has to do with, and this is just like kind of what Gary was going on. Um, tomato I'm used to, or used to eat a lot, was when um, like McDonald's and Burger King and and all those things, like the tomatoes on their, you know, um, sandwiches and stuff. Mm-hmm. And that combination just never really tasted right to me. Um, ketchup, yes. Tomato, no. Um, are eating them so much that it it just doesn't taste right because they're you you know it's depending on you know depending on when you were growing up they were eating they were either getting real like tomatoes and chopping them up or they were now I think they just get a whole bunch of like stuff that they you know um, are mass produced. And that kind of takes away from a lot of the flavor elements of it. 
like fresh, like Gary fresh tomatoes about... have a ha, definitely do have like a, a sweeter, brighter mm-hmm. flavor to it versus yeah. uh, any sort of cooked tomato or processed tomato in the case of like ketchup. Yeah, which is, yeah. Well, I suppose it's probably cooked as part of the process, but mm-hmm. but tomato ketchup is definitely cooked. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um. Uh, your corn on the cob thing rem- reminded me of um, grill, grilling and cooking out. Like mm-hmm. that's like one of the other things, especially about summer. I think of like Fourth of July weekend. You know, um, our family getting together is one of the few times where I mean, growing up, my dad would like do like ribs on the grill, and again, <laughs> again I have a complicated relationship with ribs. Go fig. Um, but um, they were always so good because it was just like you got that smokiness and that that um, I I don't I don't know how to like describe it, but there's just a different flavor to a good like rib that has been cooked on a grill or a burger that's been like grilled on like an actual grill. Um, there's just something about it. I love grilled hot dogs. Like, if you grill a hot or a hot dog or a sausage, let's put it like that. You know, bratwurst, netwurst, what have you. The minute it is like grilled, I love it. Um, because I just there's just something about that. I don't know, like there's something about that flavor, especially now, r- around this time. I think because people, you know. Summer is the time for most people to be off, you know, for one reason or another. When you're a kid, you're off because you're not, you're not going to school. Mm-hmm. Um, things aren't usually as, quote unquote, busy with regards to work for some people during this time because things are a little bit low, more low key. So I think people have a lot more time. Um, and then there's more holidays, I think, during the summer. Um, so you tend to have time and opportunity to just like. Let's do a grill. Let's cook out and take some time. You know, it so you takes longer out. to cook things on a grill. Huh? Yeah, you can cook, cook out. And it, it, there's yeah. also, like, speaking of grills, there's a difference between, like, having a gas grill and a uh, uh, charcoal grill. And awesome. was, I'm assuming most of you, the, the grilling that you experienced as a kid was charcoal? Um, yes. It's funny. <laughs> Which is probably where smokiness comes in because you get a lot of smoke yeah. from the, the the coals, which does does add mm-hmm. a certain certain flavor. Because I can definitely yeah. tell because we we went from a a charcoal grill to a gas grill at one point, and it's different. I mean, it's still good and everything. It's just different. Yeah. Um, it's <laughs> and it's mainly because of because of smoke because gas doesn't really mm-hmm. smoke. Mm-mm. I remember. Um, my mom, when, when my parents, when we got a house, um, my mom got a grass grill and we cooked on it for the first time. And I remembered hating it because it didn't taste as good. It didn't have that, that char, that flavor that I know from, you know, charcoal grills. And, um, I don't think we used it that much because I don't think my mom liked it either. Um, so it was one of those situations where I think she was trying to do something different. Um, and I think she didn't want to do or deal with like the charcoal thing. Mm-hmm. So I know eventually we went back to a charcoal grill at some point, but I remember that, that one time we got that grass grill and she was like, we were like, no, no, no. I don't mind it now. I'm okay with them now. Um, but yeah, back then, not so much. I think, you know, there's, there's certain aspects of like the food that we crave and some of it's like food memory, like from our Mm -hmm. youth, like what, you know, those things mean, like when I think of summer, these are not the things that I go for, but these are the things I think of, like I was mentioning about picnics and family gatherings. Like I think of, um, salads, Mm -hmm. I think of like, uh, 
like a macaroni salad, a pasta salad, um, potato salad, Mm -hmm. but I'm not a fan personally of ones that are like mayo based. Like Mm -hmm. every once in a blue moon, I kind of get like a hankering or I'm sort of interested in something and it's a little bit of nostalgia more than anything. Mm -hmm. But like those are the only times a year those things come up for me. Um, you know, and, and hot foods are not necessarily the desire, depending on, you know, what it is. Like, grilled food is one thing, um, but, you know, I'm not wanting a whole lot of, like, super hot, spicy yeah. kind of things. Because the idea is I want to probably keep myself cool. So that's why things that are more fresh, cooler, um, as far as ingredients, you know, and temperature, those type of things are yeah are the preference i'm not eating like the 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 thai you know spicy things i'm not eating the 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 um chipotle habanero you know pepper sauce things because i don't want to get hot i want to stay cool um if there were it's funny i don't know if there are like spices and such that don't like warm you up i'm curious if there are Something that don't. Well, like bell peppers are technically part of that that chili family, but they're they're they have more of a crisp, fresher taste yeah, to them. That's true. Um, so you you might still have something like that. Uh, I mean, one of the reasons why Mexican cuisine or Tex Mex cuisine uh, is so spicy is actually because of the the spiciness is to actually make you sweat to help cool mm. you down um a, which seems kind of like the reverse of what anybody wants to do but that's kind of like the theory because i'm in i'm in texas i'm just i'm like northern mexico almost right now uh you, you could almost almost say in some some cases like Minnesota is southern Canada. Um, so you, you kind of go along the lot that idea. That's why the Mexican and Tex-Mex uh, food in in Texas is a lot more popular and more prevalent. But besides the fact that mm-hmm. we have like a big Mexican community um, uh, here uh, in the state, so I think. Uh, but I think a lot. I still have have that sense of of wanting the cooler foods. But there's also, I think, one of the things that during the summer you think of a lot is the whole. And we've kind of been talking about it. Is the cookout? Is 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 anything that would be normally cook cooked or preferably cooked outside versus being inside? Uh, so, mm-hmm. I mean, this is the time of barbecue festivals. Mm-hmm. Just barbecue in general is is great, but they, while it is hot food, <laughs> uh, technically, but it's once it's cooked, it's like it's cooked, and it could be like cooled off. It could be it have been like done cooked and everything, and been sitting there and for like twenty thirty minutes. Uh, and but still tastes great without being like that warmer at that mm-hmm. kind of time. Mm-hmm. So, um, but they're usually well seasoned and spiced and salted for mm-hmm. preservation purposes. So, just because it's been out for a while doesn't mean that it's going to be like bad food now or anything. You don't necessarily have to reheat it, but it's still very tasty. You know, it just occurred to me when you were talking about um, festival stuff, Jeff, is like like with um, rib cook-offs and, and those type of things, like barbecue stuff. That's a big thing in this area. Like, I think the more of that you have, like, ethnic diversity, you see that stuff kind of pop up. So, like, in my region, this month going into next month, if not already the end of July, yeah, we have a lot of, like, cultural festivals that come up with their food so there's like a polish festival a german festival a greek festival mm-hmm. um the italian festival i think has already passed uh cherry fest will be coming up later on wine fest will be like towards the fall like 
And a lot of that stuff is very obviously seasonal dependent, but that's another thing I think of it like at this time of year, I'm like, oh, right. Like the local churches, you know, mm-hmm. the the communities will be, you know, gathering and, and bringing some stuff together, which was really unfortunate that a lot of that didn't happen last year or that they tried to modify and you could like pre-order foods for yeah. pickup. Um, but this year so far things have been going but now with the recent rise in cases everybody's like trying to navigate this like what do we do how do we you know not address that and like with us like with it being august we typically do the pride picnic in the month of august um, which is coming up this next coming weekend so i'm going to be busy with that and that usually means to me um, making a bunch of food and, <clears throat> you know, having things ready and, uh, you know, ready and available and serve for, for folks. And it's funny cause, um, JR and I who have been working on this thing, have been doing it for so many years now. In fact, we were just like, we always kind of joke. We're like, wait, how many years have we been doing it? And it's like, I think we're somewhere approaching like 15 years. Mm. Um, yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> and we've we've done different iterations of a protein over the years. Like, you know, early on we did like sloppy joe. We made a pulled barbecued chicken. Never again. Um <laughs> No, because people uh, this is what it came down to when I recently was describing it. I was like, people in my area are kind of stupid when it comes to food, or at least they used to be. It drove me crazy. Like we made we hand pulled oven roasted chicken made a barbecue sauce from scratch, like put all this labor in. And then people are going through the line. And they're like, what's that? We're like, it's barbecue chicken. Oh. And I was like, really? I was like, you don't know good food when you see it. And we didn't do, and we didn't think that was crazy. Like it wasn't, you know, like we were trying to make a quinoa salad or some shit that people would be like having zero recognition of. You know, so as someone pointed out, there was like, if it doesn't come with ranch dressing, this this area don't care. Like they they don't know what it is. They're not interested. It, so we coined a thing a, a number of years ago, at least a decade ago. We're like, if you've never seen it on a McDonald's menu, don't try. Just it's not there. It's not their oh, game. Oh damn. Ooh. Well, no, because like that's the thing is, you know, there's not that there are more franchise restaurant establishments like food establishments here than there are local ones and that's part of the issue is that you know people are like olive garden is authentic italian no it's not babe not at all oh oh, shit but oh no yeah no super discana and endless breadsticks good for you girl (laughs) even i know that taco bell is definitely not authentic mexican Taco Bell right. isn't authentic. It's not authentic anything. <laughs> it's just food. <laughs> it's literally yeah. We it's had just processed. It. <laughs> processed. It's, uh, right. uh, it's, it's literally it's, it's the same five, six, seven ingredients just moved around. <laughs> so that being said, but it's, but, like I, I, I think cheesy of, like, that we prepare. Yeah. So I think <laughs> about the fact that we prepare and put the the picnic yeah. together and we've done things from like burgers to sloppy joes to like chicken um what we call what we locally call ox roast which is not really made from ox it is just beef roast with certain kind of seasonings mm-hmm. um some people in this like this northeastern area call it different things so, like if you're from buffalo you usually call it beef on weck weck is a certain type of roll but it's a it's a process like a process, but it's a seasoned sliced beef in 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 au jus or juices. In this area, we call it ox roast. Around the Chicago, like Illinois region, they call it um, Italian uh, meat, I think, or Italian roast. So like it goes by different names, and it comes with different um, nuances or changes or things. But uh, yeah, it kind of you know cracks me up a little bit. Cultural thing. Yeah, you have an ox. I don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I know it's a huge misnomer. Like people who are not from this region, they're like, "You have roasted ox." We're like, "No, it's not technically ox. It's not roasted ox. Could be, but it isn't. It's not. It's just you know, kind of it's a naming just, thing. The name is dirty. Then you have uh, the one... state fairs. Where yeah. basically, uh, if, especially if you go to the Minnesota State Fair, everything is fried. And I mean, yeah. when I say everything is fried at the Minnesota State Fair, I mean everything. 
Yeah. I Every mean, you're not lying. Thing. Like, a, a, the fairs, like, state fairs are known for, like, just wildly ridiculous anything and everything. Like, if you can put batter on it and deep fry it, it is done. I don't care I mean, what it is. It's If it's a thing, the preparation at a... If it is a food of some sort, the preparation at, at a state fair is... You batter it and fry it, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, just about. Um, oh god. Um, foods that like I love fried. I love like funnel cake. Like that's the mm. one thing that I like. I sit here and like the minute you mentioned like like state fairs and that kind of thing, that funnel cake is the first thing that pops in my mind. Um, just. And I am a purist. I want just the funnel cake and I want just the sprinkling of powdered sugar. I don't need strawberries. I don't need um, chocolate. I don't need um, um, I don't I don't need apples or fried apples. I just want cake, fried like fried dough and powdered sugar. And I'm good to go. Right, so you're you're not really looking for all the extra topping stuff. I don't that need can all the extras. On. Yeah, not that I, I wouldn't. Th- no, okay, I wouldn't pass it by, but I'm not going to get it for myself. If I'm getting like, if I'm at a fair or you know an amusement park or whatever, and I have that craving for a funnel cake, I just want like the funnel cake. I don't right. need anything else because to me, the concept for me is I don't want. Granted, I'm saying powdered sugar. I don't want a whole lot of mess. Because I'm literally eating it with my fingers. I usually don't take a funnel cake and sit down and like cut and you know fork and knife it. So, so here's my question. Here's my challenge to the two of you. Maybe more more so because of what David was just saying. If you had a choice, like you were at like a an event and these vendor food trucks were side by side, would you rather funnel cake, elephant ear, or Belgian waffle. Um, can you define elephant oh. ear? Is it actually an elephant ear? <laughs> that's been fried. No, that's a good point, though. It may be like a, Clarif- you know, a clarification. A, um, it may be a regional kind of thing. So an elephant ear is, let me pull up a recipe here, um, crispy cinnamon sugar fried bread. So it's usually huge and flat and oval. Um, so it's just basically fried dough, but it has a cinnamon sugar um, coating on top of it. So in order to make the dough, just so everybody knows, it's milk, salt, sugar, uh, shortening, yeast, flour. And then you fry it in oil and you put a cinnamon sugar. Like, so it's basically a type of donut. Uh, not really. Yeah, like it, 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 I mean, it's not a donut that it has a hole and it's not like cakey. It's, the, it's a big here. Let me send you a link. It's a big fat... <laughs> flat piece of fried dough basically (laughs) which is the reason i put it in in this like challenge to you guys is what you're interested in because to me it's all the same thing like yeah it's all it's all a doughy bready thing that listen 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 three things again uh so funnel funnel cake cake, elephant ears or uh belgian waffle because i'm thinking like when i've walked through a fairgrounds or like a like an event, like those are kind of the three similar things, and they can be topped, mm-hmm. like me. Uh, um, so, <laughs> well, the Belgian Belgian waffle though so, is is a different animal, I think. Yeah, not, this is like a, yeah. I mean, basically, it looks like an elephant ear is basically a funnel cake, but instead of taking the dough and streaming it into the um, uh, fryer. Mm-hmm. You're basically so, just right. taking a big flat wad of the dough and frying it up. So what I, because it's funny you mentioned that, uh, Jeff, because one of the questions when you put in elephant ear is, are elephant ears and funnel cake the same thing? Um, I think that uh, the rest, I think the dough is slightly different. Ear, yeah, an elephant yeah. ear is a sweet pastry dough and a funnel cake is a batter, like a pancake or waffle cake batter. So it is different. So in theory, a Belgian waffle and a funnel cake are more related. Yeah. 
than an elephant because they're ear. because they're a pourable batter, quote unquote, as opposed to a thicker dough. No. But yeah. in so, essence, they all pretty much have very similar base ingredients. So, so if I were walking and I had, I'll say five, ten bucks because they can get pricey, uh, and I can only get one of those three. I'm just gonna be you. You, <laughs> you you've been given a free food ticket. Yeah. To get any one of these items, but you only have one of the food tickets to use. Mm-hmm. Which one would you get? Um, I probably would go with the Belgian waffle. I've never been a fan of funnel cakes, and uh, I th- it it I think the Belgian waffle is just more appealing pe- because I like the the softness mm-hmm. of the waffle versus. Versus the the nice the crispiness of of what an elephant ear seems to be like. I would probably go to my go to fennel cake. I would probably because it's it's for me, and this is gonna sound bad, but it's really hard to fuck up funnel cake. Not saying you can't, because you can, mm-hmm. <laughs> but. It's really hard. The only the usual issue that I have had with funnel cake sometimes is the two two things, either the dough doesn't like connect, it's too loose, and you end up with basically like fried like pieces, um, as opposed yeah, to like a to be full on cake. Yeah, because yeah. I think it's streamed in through a funnel. It's like a yeah. It's, <laughs> it is it, literally it, it, a funnel. It's like, yeah, it's usually like a funnel cake, and they kind of do this kind of thing with it, and then you yeah. they fry it and turn it over and all that stuff. Yeah, I think that's why Harry? it's called funnel cake is because they they stream it in with a funnel. Yes. So if I had my choice between the three of them, I would probably go with the Belgian waffle, but that's ah. because I like texture, mm-hmm. and I'm one of those people that likes nooks and crannies, like mm-hmm. you know. Um, so. I would prefer something that has like crispier kind of sides or whatever. Like that's a, a mm-hmm. thing that I enjoy about certain foods. So waffles, softer center. Yeah. Yeah. Like, so waffles will always win over pancakes hands down. I don't give uh, a shit what the hell you do. I was just about pancakes. to bring that up. I'm just not a, a fan <laughs> of it. So if I had those three, I would go for the Belgian waffle and I'd be like, Oh, does it come all about? Do we have a compote? Do we have like something, you know, fresh fruit or whatever that we could put over top of it? Cause I'm all mm-hmm. about that. If if the Belgian waffle is a like an experience I mean, though, then like I would top. go with an elephant ear over funnel cake, because I think funnel cake is hella messy. Like I don't care what you try to do to it, there mm-hmm. is always just shit all over the place, and I'm invariably mm-hmm. not wearing anything that like would not to cover it up. Yeah, <laughs> and that's usually my thing. So my my when I get whenever I get a funnel cake, it is never like in the middle of the day, in the morning, like when I first get there. It is always like one of the last things I get. It's one of the last things I do. Because of that mess. Plan your state fairs. <laughs> I don't want all the mess on me. Now, because it's powdered sugar. Because you want it like in I here? Said, that's... Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, anyway. Um... <laughs> what? Um, Just saying. Uh, the, the, I, would prefer to, I would prefer the powdered sugar in me. Along with the funnel cake, um, <laughs> but it doesn't always happen somehow because you know it's it's powdered fucking sugar. It's going it's just, everywhere. It just it's just sprinkled on. It's like they take a a, a sieve and they yeah. just, like tap. Yeah, it and is. It is. It is. Got a sifter that they go. And if I really, if I have my dreaders and I'm really like, if I were to have one earlier, then I would do what I kind of don't like, which is like cutting it with a knife and fork and like eating it that way which is just so counterproductive because she's um, dainty that's why well if, if you, I, you don't want as much on your fucking like clothes so like <laughs> so you try to like but get that's why deep. you suddenly turn into a meteorologist girl and you're like standing around you're like okay which way is the wind blowing <laughs> is there a table nearby like is there a place i could sit like can i can i try to like avoid a catastrophe <laughs> You're basically you take the napkin to to, to tuck it into your your shirt, and you're like leaning over the table. You what you're doing? You're you're literally doing like the like long like cuts, like like are are you're you're pulling like so far away, and then like yeah yeah. Don't touch my shirt. Don't touch my clothes. You're you're just dropping it, right? Yeah. 
Um, just, 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 just the, well, anyway. Uh, <laughs> the other thing I think of when it comes to summer foods is I think of um, amusement parks. Like, mm. like entertainment venues that have foods that you don't necessarily get in other places. So like, and the reason I came to this was because we were talking about these fried doughy kind of concoction things. And then I was thinking about like deep fried Twinkies and deep fried Oreos. Um, and like, now you can pretty much get them everywhere. But there was a time when like, you know, you had to wait till the fair came around mm -hmm. or, mm -hmm. you know, something of that sort. Yeah. Um, and then I think about like amusement parks and things. And so there's certain foods that go kind of in those environments so like cotton candy candied mm -hmm. apples um a bucket of fries um you know like yeah. like things along those lines tend to be yeah. like festival foods quote unquote yeah. and they, those could also be regional depending on where you are so mm -hmm. you know um I wouldn't be the least bit surprised to see, you know, different things in certain regions that people are like, you know, like, like hand pies um, can be, uh, you know, a significant thing. But, you know, they could be, you know, hand, hand pies are in all cultures. So, you know, some yeah, people yeah. call them an empanada, some people, mm -hmm. call them, you know, um, you know, yeah. other things. So it's just kind of depending on what you want to think of that. But I was just thinking of this like, what's that? One of my favorite foods, honestly. Different hand Empanada. pies. No, mm -hmm. different hand pies, just it's, in general. Oh, different hand pies. Yeah, okay. Because that's the thing. Um, I've Oh, gosh. It's been such a long time since I've had something along those lines. Um, and I'm thinking, it was the last time when I was at King's Island? No. 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 Just trying to think out loud, like, like when was the last time I had something like that? And I'm like, oh, no, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I agree um, with you. Like, it's a, it's a definite regional, multi, like, I don't want to say multicultural, but it's one of those few things that can go everywhere. Like, someone has every, most food, have most food, like, types or food, you know, cultures have something along those lines. Yeah, I was just realizing, like going back to something we were talking about earlier, like cool beverage stuff. So, like, I don't probably ever think about a milkshake in the winter. Oh no! Like, like, like slushy, freeze, icy, like mm -hmm. um, type of drinks are you know really more kind of like a, a hot weather. Um, or, or you might have like some of the hot beverages that you would just have iced. Or, or or into for summer like uh coffee houses don't just have regular coffee which is hot they also have an iced version or a mm -hmm. uh, uh a blended version you know and it's kind of funny how like our tastes have expanded so much over the decades like i think of when i was a kid my grandmother would drink iced coffee every day of her life like she just mm -hmm. had this big coffee mug and she would make, you know, a pot of coffee and then she'd throw like three ice cubes in it and she would, you know, just stir the, the coffee with the ice cubes in it to cool it down or whatever. And it was kind of a running joke of the family because she would never really put it back like on to heat up or eventually when they got a microwave, like she wouldn't heat up like she always wanted it cool either to room temperature or cold. And then, you know, the 90s come along and, ooh, iced coffee is like a big freaking thing. And the whole family was like, she'd been, she been drinking it, like, since the 50s or 60s. Like, this ain't new. Well, then you, you have, know what like, I mean? iced like, teas, sweet tea, you know. Ice yeah. tea. Sweet tea is basically iced tea just with, like, a ton extra sugar. Just a diabetic coma in a glass. Yeah. I mean, depending on where you get it, yeah. Like I, in fact, that that surprised me recently. I was gonna, I was gonna ask you, David, if you saw this. Well, both of you, since Jeff, you live in Texas, Lipton has a bottled sweet tea now. Apparently, I have nice. not actually looked for it specifically. There's I'm a commercial, sure it. Oh, and God. I was really surprised to see that they that they're promoting and selling bottled sweet tea. But it, it it probably isn't seen that much up here because sweet tea isn't that it's a popular thing. per se. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's a thing it's in the so, south. I should say, 
in the it's north so it's funny. there but it's not really a thing right it's and it's so definitively funny. southern sweet tea is how they're like promoting it mm-hmm. it's so and that's funny. where i was like okay one of the biggest things i had to learn when i moved up here um is there's iced tea which is not sweet Um, Sweet and diced tea. Right. It is literally just tea that has been iced. Iced tea. Like, you don't, it's not like, it's, it's like separate order. It's not unsweetened iced tea. It is just iced tea. Like the, uh, it is technically unsweetened because it does have sugar, but it was never meant to be, um, it, it didn't, it wasn't originally sweet. Like it, like here, Northern it is iced tea, and some places are getting into the the habit of doing sweet tea. But usually, when you order, I remembered going to some I can't remember the restaurant name. But I was I was at a restaurant and um, I ordered a um, I got an iced tea, and I took a sip. Thinking it was going to be like I know what I've always known, um, mm-hmm. like a nice sweet you know iced tea, and it was not. <laughs> you were like, "Mama, that, this is not sweet tea." <laughs> what is this? Well, it, there's and there even, is a difference even, between there is a difference between sweet tea and sweetened tea, mm-hmm. because sweet yeah. tea is basically sugar syrup with that was brewed with tea leaves mm-hmm. or at least that's how i d- would describe the fl- uh, describe the flavor although i'm sure there is some water in there but mostly mostly it's it's just yeah but while okay. sweetened is just yeah it just tea sweetened with some sugar maybe or 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 yeah. syrup uh, and it has a much less sweet flavor than sweet tea. Yeah. There's yeah. kind of like, there's yeah. three layers. <laughs> Unsweetened, <Yeah. laughs> sweetened, and then okay. sweet. Yep. I had, um, I've, you know, because, you know, because of, you know, health reasons and pre-dive, you know, I cast a, I cannot do as much sweet tea as I used to. Um, I always wonder about my brother because he, he will um am I am I remember God, I hope I'm remembering this correctly. He doesn't like McDonald's sweet tea. But for some reason he likes White Castle sweet tea. And I don't know why. I wish I knew. But he'll get that shit in my gallon and and bring it home. And have it in you know, his refrigerator so that he can drink it. I mean he's an adult, he can do what he wants, but like I've never, I've, I've, I would, I, the, the sweet tea I know of that it was so popular was the one that was from McDonald's because it was McDonald's. Um, and invariably, it, it always, unfortunately, it always varied. Someone who is from, you know, the South, like, I, I will own that. Um, it is, there's a certain level. <laughs> that where you can consider it sweet tea and um for some reason mcdonald's is like all over there you can get like you were talking about jeff the sweetened tea mm-hmm. not the same and then you get like oh my god who put a who put the one leaf of tea in this sugar water like <laughs> like like this just it's just enough to be considered tea because there's just enough quote unquote tea in it, but it's really just sugar water. Um <clears throat> Okay, so but still so according to Wikipedia, sweet tea is a tea that is brewed very strong with a large amount of sugar added while the tea is hot. A mixture of sugar and tea is then diluted with water, served over ice, and occasionally garnished with lemon. hmm Yes, that is that is the method. You're making it at the same time as um, you're adding the sugar while you're brewing it. 
So it's kind of incorporated. What is this? So what I just said to you guys, <laughs> I was looking for this because I'm like, I'm not crazy. I know I saw it. There's a new Lipton campaign for for iced tea to be drunk in the summer. And what's a little misleading to me is like it, it seems that they're focusing on southern sweet tea. But in reality, if you pay close enough attention, they're promoting all their teas. Um, but yeah, this new campaign came out this summer. And that's what I was like, oh, I didn't realize Lipton made a southern sweet tea, but they do. Uh, also, so, spe- speaking of uh, 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 iced tea, there's always one of my favorites, which is the half and half, which is, mm. I just learned like just a few seconds ago, it is not the same as an Arnie Palmer. While half okay. and half had been referred to as an Arnold Palm- Palmer, Palmer himself, the namesake of it, actually prefers two parts iced tea to one part lemonade. Oh, okay. So there is a distinction in like the in the mix of the recipe. Yeah. So we I have three parts. Did not know that. Two iced tea, one lemonade. But most of what you'll find in the markets are considered half and half. One because you know uh, Arnold Palmer is famous and he owns his name, <laughs> so you can't market an Arnie Palmer. Uh, but you'll you can get half and half in the store, and I like I I really like those just because I'm a huge fan of lemonade, and I kind of like having some sweetened iced tea. So this is what I've done when I used to go out to restaurants a lot more, and I just realized I had to say it like that because I was like, wow, I haven't really been out eating since 2019. Um, but <laughs> two years ago, like when I would go out, I would usually ask them and be like, what kind of tea do you have? And if they had fresh brewed iced tea, I would also ask, do you have lemonade? And they would say yes. Well, most of the time they would say yes. And I was like, can I have, you know, either an Arnold Palmer or a half and half? And they would say yes. And the reason why is because I I can drink iced tea plain, but mm-hmm. I'm not a fan of like black or orange pico tea because it's very bitter. Mm-hmm. I'm more of an herbal tea person. Mm-hmm. So but the lemonade usually has enough sugar in it that it helps sweeten the iced tea. Yeah. So in reality, when you put those two together, you're getting a less sweet drink. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes you go places and they're like, oh, well, we have pink lemonade and we have, you know, like fountain tea or whatever. And I'm like, mm, no, because no. then it's just like, you know. No, 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 no. That is not. No, you don't put those two together ever. <laughs> that is nasty <laughs> AF. What? I'm sorry. Pink lemonade and 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 iced tea. No, no. You, pink lemonade is. I, I, I'll, I'll, yeah, it, it. I will definitely say, having done it several times, I kind of enjoy it. But I, I think regular lemonade is much better in a half and half than pink lemonade. Yeah. Yes, but you like pink lemonade. I so. like pink pink lemonade. So sometimes I do like yeah. that that tart that so, extra tartness. So, yeah, that's you. <laughs> so you do you. Well, <laughs> that's me. And, and actually i'm a big fan of like fruit lemonades so th- mm-hmm. this is definitely like a summer thing so like i like but i like real fruit lemonades and i'm gonna put somebody on blast i'm gonna put this company on blast even though i like them and i get food from them wendy's y'all come out with all these flavored lemonades but my problem is they're all syrup like like flavored enhanced and they're like really sweet and I'm just mm-hmm. like, I just like, but if I go to like more of a mom and pop restaurant and I ask them, they're like, oh, we have strawberry lemonade. And I'm like, you know, and I ask them, I'm like, you know, do you guys make it or whatever? And if they say yes, then I'm more inclined because it usually means they took real strawberries and smashed them up or macerated or whatever and put them in with the lemonade. Not, I just went over and bought a bottle of like strawberry syrup and just glug, 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 you know put that shit in like it's you know i'm trying to make strawberry milk Mm -mm. not the same thing no i yeah teas and lemonades and like flavors and um like fruit is a big thing around this time um strawberries and berries i think are usually in season um i'm gonna say that (laughs) because i'm pretty sure yeah like um Strawberry lemonade, peach lemonade, um, 
I'm not a fan of flavored lemonades myself. I can take or leave them. I'm not going to, it's usually one of the things where if I'm um, out, I would get like, like kind of what Gary was going for. I will probably get something along those lines if I'm at like a mom and pop or a, like a local, you know, store or uh, restaurant where I have a feeling that they're probably making it, you know, for everything is being made from like scratch ish, you know, kind of mm-hmm. thing. Whereas like you were talking about Wendy's in particular, but like any place that's like chain or what have you, I might not get it unless I'm craving it. Like, um, excuse me, the, um, where is it that had it? Well, here, like, there's UDF here in town, and um, around, like, right around the early part of the summer, the it's the peach, like, peach iced tea, peach ice cream, what right. have you, that comes out very much around this time of the year. And then, like, when I see that, I'm like, oh, I'll get that, I'll try that, because I like the flavor of a peach. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, but flavored again, like, teas can like, be, can be can really depend. Uh, I'd pretty much stick yeah. with the the lemon iced teas. Um, mm-hmm. There's a uh, Texas tea makes a one with grapefruit. Texas tea. Let me take a look at there. Yeah, but it's gonna just depend for me. Um, Look, I don't want the Texas uh, Education Agency. I want the company that they called Texas <laughs> Tea. <laughs> um, but again, um, funny things. Um, one of the main fruits that come around this time of the year is one of the things I'm not a particular fan of. Watermelon? Yeah. Yeah. I am not the biggest fan of watermelon. It's okay. You don't have to be. Yeah. When I um, are, I think I've, we've talked about this before. Um, if I'm going to eat watermelon, it's going to already be like cubed and like ready. Like I'm, I'm not going to like spend the time cutting up a watermelon or having someone cut me off a piece of the watermelon. No, I, uh, I'm not eating it off the rind. I am. It is. <laughs> already like cut and cubed um hope preferably seedless that is that is that is me for sure mm-hmm. um, no and i think that's fair i mean well um i mean like i'm not a big melon person like i love watermelon mm-hmm. and that's kind of it like i'm not into <sighs> the like cantaloupe mm-hmm. uh musk melon mm-hmm. honeydew mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i feel like there's one or, or two other popular ones i'm forgetting like i'm just like nope so like like when i go someplace and they say they have fruit salad as a side like if i'm getting breakfast especially or something and i'm like what's in your fruit salad because invariably there's a, have a melon. ton of melon and i'm like i don't want your melon like I would prefer one that has berries and grapes and bananas and, you know, mm-hmm. like, you know, pineapple I wonder if, citrus yeah. slices. But, I would but that's it. just a personal preference. Yeah. So I have a personal preference. I'm okay with like a fruit salad that's like melon based, but I prefer a fruit salad that has like, like you said, like pineapple, um, grape, strawberry, and uh, maybe blueberry or um, even like raspberry, blackberry, one of those kind of like, you know, berries. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I think my mom used to make a <laughs> fruit salad using like a fruit cocktail. Yeah, I mean, uh-huh. that's. Yeah. And, and, they, and she, would, she would basically incorporate it all by using whipped cream. Oh. See, that's another thing that I actually haven't thought about. Um, <laughs> let me look it up. Because I haven't seen it in so long, and maybe it's like kind of gone by the wayside. Quick, quick side note, because I was uh, researching when you switched topics, but uh, the, 
the Texas cheese I was referring to was actually the uh, Rio Grande Valley Texas style half and half, which is re Rio red grapefruits made into a lemonade blended with their Sugarland sweet tea, making it the Texas style half and half. And it's and it's pretty good. That sounds really good. I'm not it's, sure how it's I got a bitterness the, because of the red red grapefruit. Yeah, the the red grapefruit, but, but, but it is right. Tasty. Huh. And but see, I the... I enjoy grapefruit. Yeah, like, like I could, but, I can I, but I'm a pink red I... grapefruit person. If I had to, yeah. like, eat, yeah, grapefruit, yeah. straight up grapefruit. If I had a choice. But all the the tex I'm... these Texas teas are organic tea plus non GMO flavors. Which I, side note on GMOs. <laughs> GMOs are not necessarily bad things. We know. I, j I just want to say, <laughs> say, if if you can have a crop of delicious tasting, perfectly safe to eat tomatoes that you didn't have to to spray pesticide on because they were genetically modified, fine to uh, uh, basically have their own natural repellent for for pests. Mm. I'd be on that. I'd rather have the non pesticide genetically modified tomatoes than. Organic tomatoes that had had to have pesticides spread on them, otherwise pests would be all over the crop. Mm. Right. No, I mean, I I get that people have concerns about science stepping in and modifying foods. However, um, <laughs> you know what, Lloyd? Anyways, sorry, <laughs> I just read the, the live chat. Um, no, the the thing is, is that um, we. Uh, Damn it, I lost my train of thought. Um, I, I think people misunderstand when they think of like GMO. Like, yes, technically some things are really, truly genetically modified in a lab. But I'm like, if you look at foods we eat today versus foods from 100 or 200 years ago, they look very different. Like bananas, baby. they Our bananas today look nothing like they used to. Then, They've been modified. But, but it was right, the, over it was the years. Brett. They've, they've, it was Correct, which is bread, still so. technically modifying it. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's that thing. Anyways, before I forget, um, the thing I other thing I mentioned that I don't know if it's kind of going away, like as far as interest, is ambrosia salad. Mm. No, um, that's another like summery kind of salady, but it's technically a dessert in my opinion. Um, yeah, because that's that's um. Waldorf salad is another one. Like when I was talking earlier about like mm -hmm. potato salads and mac salads, that kind of stuff. Like, and it all comes from like the 50s and 60s when, man, we just like to put a bunch of crap in a bowl and goop it up with some type of saucy, like, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And it just cracks me up because, like, yeah, like, uh, and don't get me wrong, like, I'm, I'm a, I'm a mixed dish person. So, like, I'm not one of those fanaticals that, like, has to have everything uniquely separate. Like, I've been looking while we've been talking. I'm going to own it. Um, I'm probably going to make a spacho. Um, because from the CSA, I have the ingredients. And I was just, like, as we were discussing foods and, like, you know, what we like at this time of year, I was like, oh, yeah, like, that's a that's a thing I could probably do. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm going to make a spacho. <laughs> gazpacho! So... But um, I think there's there's all sorts of like foods along those lines that are, you know, more popular for folks. Mm -hmm. I think in general, like, when it comes to, to summer, the, the primary thought is about the uh, uh, cold and sweet. But I think we've also demonstrated that there are some hot things that that we enjoy. And I don't mean like hot spicy necessarily. Yeah. But, uh, um, like, Hot like barbecue just seems like a summer food because it's like big old grills and smokers and such which is all done outside during the time when it's nice and hot but that heat gets dissipated in the outdoors instead of being confined in the house and especially because you don't want a lot right. of smoke exactly. in your house too so <laughs> yeah smokers. also that like um and it, yeah i agree like i think um there's a lot, of, as we're kind of been going about it, there's a lot of nostalgia to summer and the food that we ate and eat. Kind of like I think Gary mentioned earlier, um, childhood memories, 
summers, summer camps, you know, getting away. Like you mentioned, Jeff, like going outside and cookouts and stuff. That Those are just like, those are things I remember from more from childhood than now. Not that I don't, you know, eat out or cook. That sounded bad. Um, <laughs> that I cook out or go out and eat things like that anymore. But um, I will admit I am, I am, I, I, I like my comfort as I'm sitting here in almost like, like a little chilly in my AC because it's like 70 degrees in this house and it's going to get up to like 90 here outside. Yeah, totally. Um, I want like, I like to be cool. And I'm also, I don't like insects. So like the idea of like being outside and bugs and stuff flying around. No, no mama, not my thing. But <laughs> as a kid, you don't give a fuck. You know, you don't care. Um most of the time, unless you're, you know, you have things. Um, well, you get but, citronella candles and place it around the. No. <laughs> yes. It, yeah. Yeah. Citronella candles. That's great. That doesn't keep everything out. I don't. I don't. I don't need the bugs flying near my shit. And you can keep some things out, but you can't get everything out. So, in other words, you want to be enclosed. Like, you mm -hmm. want to be inside, like, a screened-in area, if possible, mm -hmm. or something. Yeah, I can understand yeah. that. I mean... Don't get me wrong. I'm okay with, like, if if I can do it sometimes. Like, the... Um, um, moderation. <laughs> yeah. Like, a moderation a little bit here and there. Like, once or twice. Like, if I were at a weekend camping somewhere. Maybe. And I had... And... and I had clamping, yeah. And I had a space mm -hmm. where I could get away from things. If I if it gets to be too much, like that's nice indoors and cool, I'm fine. I can go to like do the things outdoors because I know at some point if I really need to, I can just hop back or walk back to someplace where I'm I'm good. Yeah, right. right. I I think that you know there's there's an appropriate kind of time and place to things. Um, and I get it. Not it's not everyone's gig. Not everybody, you know, wants to to be a part of whatever the the steps are to get the you know the thing that that is going to be done in that moment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I also realized that we had all this conversation, been talking for about an hour, and we still didn't talk at all about the articles that. We had. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, yeah, these are just a couple of articles I put together. Like, so one of them is the best summer foods in every state from eatthis.com. I thought it was interesting. Like, it runs through all 50 states. It's from earlier this year. And it lists, um, supposedly, I will put it that way, the best summer food of every state. Um, I don't know how they derived this because I question some of the selections. Um, but it gives you a good variety of things. Pennsylvania. What's that? Philly, Philly cheesesteak for Pennsylvania, kettle corn for, for Ohio. Ohio. Yeah. And yeah. I forgot what was Texas. Because I did look like that was one of the first things I looked at last night when I looked at the article. I was like, like I mean, brisket, brisket. No, not the, brisket. It's oh. very, very uh, uh, apropos. Yeah. Uh, for, I would say that because Minnesota? that kind of falls in line with what we've been talking about. Oh, Minnesota about. was walleye. I don't know about that. Don't get right. me wrong. That's why I'm like, there, there, there's there's that. a lot yeah you, there's a lot of people fishing and and catching walleye mm -hmm. in, in the summer in minnesota that's that's true but is that the best food in in the best summer food in minnesota eh. <laughs> and one of them is like beer oh colorado yeah colorado got that. beer and i was like what is up with that why does colorado get beer beers i mean beer is a food question mark um okay I mean, so it's, it's not a food but but what's beverage. better than an ice cold fresh brewski in the summer here let me let me answer that question uh not an ice cold brewski because uh if you're getting an ice cold brewski the the best uh, beers to have ice cold are going to be lawnmower beers like the crap beer of like budweiser bud light uh michelob and and those type of ales or loggers, actually, I think they're loggers. The, if you want some real stuff, you don't want it ice cold. Maybe a little chilled, but not necessarily ice cold. 
from somebody who spent a good portion of his uh, 20s and uh, early 30s uh, studying beers because I was a little obsessed, obsessed at the time. <laughs> mm. the um the other article is just top 10 summer foods which is sort of arbitrary but it kind of you know talks yeah. about um technically the question that starts this blog article says what are 10 essential foods i should be eating this summer yeah um and this I is from like a kale on that thing i was like um, okay man i i don't think it means like the best or the or, or the the favorites it's a hey during the summer here are some good foods that are are good that are either right. seasonal for the for the um, for freshness or they're good foods to eat this summer right. the only thing on the list that I that I raise an eyebrow at is Greek yogurt because I don't think of Greek yogurt as a summer food like it's available year round it doesn't have anything to do with the season but everything else is like pretty much produce so we've got spinach tomatoes zucchini watermelon apricots corn avocado blueberries and then technically grilled chicken which you could have any time of year but mm -hmm. um i think they're thinking about you know how like you can have a a grill and notably <laughs> they say you could put it in a fresh salad or top each uh, piece of grilled chicken with apricot and berry glaze for extra flavor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's good sounds good Mm -hmm. Are you hungry? So, <laughs> and it's chicken. Kind versus, of. Like I'm thinking I've got to go downstairs <laughs> to the kitchen and make my damn gazpacho now because. Do, do you know what I, uh, what I, when I uh, woke up an hour early for some strange reason, what I, I have cooking over in the kitchen, I have a taco okay. soup and I can smell it. <laughs> and it smells good. But well, with that, yeah, I think I think that's the end. Oh, we could probably talk about food for hours. Bears, what do you expect? Anyways, playways, contact us. Let us know what your favorite summer foods are. Uh, you can do that over on our website. Come on the blog at comesoutloud dot com. She's at, um, leave a, uh, shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail dot com. Leave a voicemail at three six one C O L talk. That's three six one two six five eight two five five. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL. Uh, you can also uh, join our Entourage chat and chat us up at tinyworld.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, if you want to find out when we're planning on recording these uh, these shows and join us live, you can find out when those uh, we plan those at our Google Calendar at tinyworld.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various accoutrements such as a Cubs Out Loud logo shirt uh, in various styles. I've got sleeveless. Gary's got like standard, but in a different color because you can choose your colors. And then, of course, if mm -hmm. you want, you could do, get a lovely, uh, smashy designed, uh, now that you're sticky, here's your cookie shirt. <laughs> shirt. Um, Smashies. Do you remember Smashies link? Because I, I still want to promote them. Was it Teespring uh -huh. or? Yes, Teespring Smash the Bear. Thank you. I think I think that's what it is. Uh, please support him as uh, as well. Well, you can also uh, subscribe to us as a patron at patreon.com slash comes out loud, where you can get VODs and uh, audio recordings of the pre and post shows. This pre show, we had a debate. <laughs> that's all I'm going to leave. Uh, Gary and I had a debate because. Somebody decided that he needed to take off his headphones and walk away. What was all left. this drama? He was like, nope, not having it. <laughs> it, was, it was great. It was, it was one of our, my favorite pre-shows on <laughs> And the post-shows um, are, are kind of the bonus of it. Uh, and one big feed of both uh, Cubs Out Loud and Cubs Out Loud Drink Race. Um, you can also send us some um, cash if you want to by just going to paypal.me slash comes out loud. You can find us on various podcast platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Play, uh, uh, which I think they're changing that somehow. I don't understand it really. Um, uh, Amazon, Audible, and Spotify, uh, just as examples. You can find me anywhere on the internet as box at box, puppy, box, cut, box, something or other, and Windjump, W Y N G G E M on Twitch, where I've been streaming a shit ton of Final Fantasy XIV. In fact, I literally streamed all freaking day yesterday because 
Essegos has reached Shadowbringers, and I love Shadowbringers so much. I love it so much. It's so good. Can't wait till the expansion later on. Um, and also Bears and Dragons later tonight, where we're getting to the end of our first campaign. Ooh. Just a couple more weeks. Oh, dear God. Um, <laughs> reading, reaching the finale. And uh, Damon, where can people find you? Um, if you would to get in touch with me, you can find me at TheaterCup79 on most bear-related sites or on Facebook. That's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9. Or you can find me as Pup underscore Umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like Gary. to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GareBear73. And with that, I'm going to click the cue buttons and uh, scroll up. And say good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Ciao for now.